we go. Hey, is, is, uh, isn't that awesome to win? Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you all the question. When's the last time you won? Like, you really have that feeling like, man, I'm winning. I'm kicking ass. I'm successful. When's the last time you had that feeling? How often do you want to have that feeling? Hello? Help me out. How often do you want to have that feeling? have that feeling every day. So let's talk about winning. Just go on there for Winning is a behavior. Winning is a trait. Winning is a characteristic. Winning is something you commit to. And winning is something you think about all the time. And winning is something you demand of yourself. It is not in any way, shape, or form something that consequently just happens. It's not accidental. It's not once in a while. Winning has got to be a long-term, daily commitment on your mind all the time. Your actions, your thoughts, your beliefs have all got to be channeled in the same way. And you've got to commit to winning for many reasons. You've got to commit to winning because people are counting on you, because it builds strength, it builds longevity, it builds confidence. Winning is freaking awesome. It tastes really good. It feels really good. You ought to get addicted to winning. And winning is directly connected to your work ethic. You all with me on that? Yes. Winning is directly connected to what? Work ethic. Say it like you mean it. Work ethic. The work ethic. So you look at everyone out there, everybody who's got incredible work ethic, super hard workers typically are your winners. In every walk of life and at everything people do, winning is connected to your work ethic. If you're in sports, it's the hardest workers. It's the guys who put in the most reps. The most time in the gym. It's the hardest workers that always win. So if you study winners, I want to challenge you to really put your nose in books and magazines and audios, whatever you need to do, in order for you to study the characteristics of winners. Winners are committed to winning. Losing is not an option. They're focused on winning. They're completely sold out to winning. Are you a person that sees yourself as a winner? Or do you tolerate defeats? Do you tolerate not winning? I don't know about you, but my life is, man, I just decided I want to win. It tastes so good to win. Since I was a young boy, when I played on different sports teams, I want you to know that I've tasted both sides of the spectrum. I was on teams where we lost every single game, and I just hated every moment of it. I remember I was, I was a sophomore at the Wardy High School, and we played this one team. We, we had this. The scheduling was a little bit off, so they scheduled us to play the JV team of some other school. And of course, they were great older than us, and they were more athletic. Do you know that I was on a team that lost by 100 points on a basketball game? Do you know how demoralized? I understand they were juniors and we were sophomores, and they just mopped this up. Linwood High School had this team, and I never forgot that. By the way, these defeats hurt. And I participated in a basketball game where we scored like 17, 18 points the whole game, and they had like 121 points. They beat us by more than 100 points. Oh! By the way, you just taste that, and you don't understand how nasty, how devastating. And I understand, but just, hey, they could have finished by 50, it still would have been, but, but to lose by 100? So I was on a team that lost by 100 points. And you chalk that up, and you taste it, and you just, oh, you understand how nasty that is, and how you never want to go through that. Then flip the channel here. I was also on a team where we never lost to anyone. We were the conference champions when I was a junior All-American, like very similar to your Pop Warner. Uh, I used to play for Doherty Gorillas. That was, by the way, that was the actual name of the team, Doherty Gorillas. And we went undefeated. Matter of fact, we didn't have one team score a touchdown on us. From start, from, from the, the beginning of the season, all the way through the conference championship, we had no one score a freaking touchdown. Our defense was awesome. The offense was amazing. I was part of that team. So I've been involved with teams that are just get killed and mopped up. And I've also been involved with teams that are just incredibly powerful. And I just remember, it's like I go back into the recess of my memory. It says, what was it like to be on a team where the other team, could, all the teams that we played with, it was like 10, no, about 12, 13 games. We remained undefeated, and no one, no one uh, scored a touchdown on us. And I think the best team got like three first downs on us. And if you understand football, like three first downs in one game, that's like so poor. So that's how good our team was. So I've been on the real losing team, and I've been on an absolute undefeated winning team. By the way, winning by a mile. Like we used to beat people 63 to nothing, 59 to nothing, 46 to nothing. Our like. Lowest, our lowest win was like 21-0. That was our lowest win. 
So I want you to taste that. I want you to I want you to think about the times you've won in life and how committed you've been to winning and what it matters to you to be winning. And in sports, they keep score. Y'all understand that? Yeah. You play basketball, or baseball, football, soccer, any score, golf. They keep score. Like this team had so many points, and this team had so many points, and they determine a winner. In life, they said that they don't keep score. They don't uh, keep score, but I think that's BS. I think they do. In life, it's your paycheck versus your neighbor versus your other peers. That's the score. So if you're not making big money, that means you're getting it handed to you by someone else. In life, it's your paycheck. It's your confidence. It's what you do on a daily basis. Your paycheck says a lot about you. You accept very little or you demand a lot. You work real just barely or you don't. So I think you committing to winning and a winning mentality has got to be something that you're fighting for, you're studying. Do you study winners? I made it a point that I study people who are successful. I study business people who are successful, sports people that are successful. I'm constantly being inspired by people who do above the norm, people who demand a championship life. For me and my family, we expect to win. Every single day, I get out there into society and I need to win for my family. Let me tell you how you're winning. You prospect every day. That's how you know you're gonna win. If you prospect every day, what's the magic number in WFT? Ten. 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 So do you prospect ten new people minimum every single day? That's how you know you're winning. If you don't prospect minimum ten people every single day, that's how you know you're losing. So that day you go home and you chalk up a win or you chalk up a loss. Ten brand new names and numbers every single day. Ten, hey, you look sharp, what do you do? I'm with a financial firm, we're growing, we're expanding. You fit the profile of someone who can be with us. If you do ten names and numbers with people in society, whether they come in or they don't, but if you work hard and you go get 10 names and numbers on a daily basis, that's how you know you're winning. Here's another way. Do you go on a KTP every day? That's how you know you're winning. Do you go on a kitchen table presentation every day? So the name of this game is prospecting guests to BPMs and also KTPs across the kitchen table that you actually go to. Not that you schedule and it canceled. I'm talking about you physically sat in front of Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner Married Kids and you do a, a KTP, that's how you know you're winning here. Also how you know you're winning is you get paid every Tuesday, you get paid every Friday, that's how you know you're winning. So I want you to measure your wins versus your losses and I want you to edge more wins than you have losses. There's very few people who go undefeated in life, but you need to be winning more, far more than you lose. I go to the gym and I can tell when I win and I can tell when I lose. When I, when I win is when I go there and I have my workout planned out and I execute that workout and I do my sets and I walk out of the gym just exhausted from the workout. That's how I know I won. And then those other times we go there and you're just half-assing it, you do a little set, then you get on Facebook and then you're lollygagging around and you drink, have a drink of water and then it's like, oh, I'm kind of tired, I got something to do and you leave the gym and you half ass it. That's how you lose. By the way, do you know people who go to the gym year after year still look the same? Yes. That's losing. You shouldn't go to the gym for three years and you still look the same, have the same amount of body fat, and you still soft around the middle. <laughs> Wrong plan, dude. And by the way, if you want to win, you got to win in all areas of your life. You just can't win here and then suck here and suck here and compromise here. You got to win across the board. You should have an awesome business. You should have a profitable business. You should be in a position where you're moving your life forward and forward and forward, and constantly things are getting better and better and better. You all with me on that? Yes. It's important for you to win in all areas of your life. You need to win in marriage. You need to win with family. You need to win in business. You need to win with income. You need to win in relationships. You need to win across the board. It's just not good to win in one area if you call yourself a champion or when performers got their act together. No one's perfect, but you ought to be fighting to make sure that you get into that position. Are you all with me on that? Yes. How many of you guys, you need to declare to the world that you're going to have winning mentality, a winning edge, a winning work ethic. You need to say that to yourself. Raise your hand if you're all up for winning. Like, I'm just committed to winning. Make some noise while you're at it. Will you? Oh, that's awesome. Let me just tell you, man, it feels awesome to win. And it freaking sucks to lose. It sucks. And you have to minimize your sucking. It's gonna happen, but you minimize it. If you're sucking 10 times, you're like, hey, reduce that down to two or three or maybe zero. But you ought to win far more than you lose. Commit to winning, change it. Let me flip the page here a little bit. 
This hierarchy is getting ready to win bigger. Yes. Who's in with me about winning bigger in this hierarchy? Yes. Yes. Okay, when you raise your hand, really raise your hand. Stop doing the little weenie stuff. Raise your hand like this. Let me see. Who's winning? Yes. So we need to win big. I had these gentlemen up here earlier, and I just got to tell you, I was impressed by what they talked about, and just we need to get our game up. This company, Everest, it's just really impressive. And we need to get our minds wrapped around the idea that we need to do this, one, for our own good, and we need to do it for the good of our clients. So I want to go there with you for a little bit. We want to we want to be the example hierarchy for having the complete WFG product line. Are you with me? Yes. We want to be the hierarchy that says, man, those guys do what they say they're going to do. They own the products they recommend. We're not just talking about recommending this product to our clients, but yet we don't have it ourselves. So here we go. Effective immediately. I want to call the shot. I'd like to have every single one of you guys go to your immediate upline who's licensed and enroll and buy yourself an Everest policy. Every single one of you guys here, whoever is your upline, let's keep it clean. Do not do anything funny. Whoever is your upline, whether you like them or not, they're in alignment, no they're not, as long as they're licensed and appointed, you go to your immediate upline and says, hey, can you sign me up on one of these Everest policies? I want us to show up to next moment on Monday and we should have, I don't know, a thousand new Everest policies that we put on the books and our cash flows are gonna go up and our points are gonna go up and many of us are gonna hit the next level of income because our team consumes some of the products we're talking about. You all with me? Yeah. Okay, we need to have all of you guys fall suit with that. You cannot sell to people that which you don't own. Mm -hmm. I just want you to know that. So if you have an upline, regardless if you like them or don't, that doesn't matter. Take that out of the way. Take your ego out of the way. Take your opinions out of the way. Uh, this, is, this is the boss right here calling the shot. I want all of you guys here to buy an Everest policy for your on yourself directly from your upline. Everybody with me on that? Yes. Okay. By the way, can you expect your team to buy from you if you don't buy from your upline? Nope. No. Okay. So then we practice what we preach. Every single one of you guys go do that. Here's, here's what I want you to understand. You can write notes on this right here. This is going to be really cool. So <clears throat> you own our products so that it builds internal confidence and your family is protected. So number one, start off with the basics. You ought to have funeral concierge service through an Everest policy. Why are we talking about that? Well, you talk about all of the benefits that it provides. It says it, it provides immediate benefits upon death, cash in two days. So if you pass away, the family has the cash in two days to pay for all of the all of the funeral expenses. There's concierge service with huge savings, unlimited cloud storage for keeping important information with immediate access. It's organized record keeping at the time when you need it the most. That makes sense? Yes. Okay, so we want you to be forward thinking. You ought to have a policy that does all of this. I remember when my uh, core and I's dad passed away and the family's scrambling trying to find this record, trying to go here, shopping for this, shopping for flowers, shopping for the, you know, the, the uh, cemetery place, organizing the mass. It's, it's chaos. Here you are in the worst mental state, and now you gotta worry about all this stuff. You gotta negotiate with these salespeople that they know you're weak and they're just gonna clown you. Well, I'm glad Everest is gonna step in, into our place and just take care of all that for us. And by the way, I've seen the work they do. I believe in the company. In April, I'm getting ready to go down to Houston. I'm meeting with Mark Duffy, the owner, the, the founder of Everest. And I just want you to know that I'm behind this. And so should you be. Every single one of you guys should have an Everest policy for the funeral concerts. Number two, you should have protection. You should protect your family with money paid to them to ensure your income never gets lost in the household. And you ought to have a Transamerica Term LB policy. Every single one of you guys in here, you ought to have a Transamerica Term LB. Shame on you if you don't. If you're a man in here, you got a family, you got kids, and you don't have a Transamerica LB policy, and you need, to, you need a checkup from the neck up. That's for protection. Number three, we need to talk about accumulation. Accumulation is an overfunded IUL. So you ought to have this as well. This is now building your insurance portfolio. You have an Everest policy for funeral services. You have Transamerica LB term. In case you die, you get cancer, stroke, or heart attack. Or if you can't do two of the six acts of daily living, if you can't bathe by yourself, if you have a continence issue, if you can't dress yourself, you can't eat by yourself, you can't toilet by yourself, you can't transfer yourself, 
If you can't do two of those six, then they pay you up to 24% benefit of your face amount. That's incredible. And by the way, you need to be selling it to every single client, every single person out there. I've never met a person that says, no, it doesn't make sense. I don't think I'm going to go through any of that. One, everybody's going to die. And typically, before they die, they get sick. Correct? Yes. Okay. So, funeral concerts is Everest. Two, protection is Transamerica Terminal B. Three, accumulation of assets is an overfunded IUL. You need to put more money in your IUL. Every time you make more money, you need to be thinking about saving it. And then the last thing is you need wealth creation. You need to be putting away money to really grow your wealth. This is called the Get Rich account, and that, my recommendation would be what's called the Transamerica Alpha account. You need to get that from your upline, 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 whoever is security licensed, you need to get that product from them. So I want you to see yourself showing up to someone's kitchen table and you bring your policies, showing Mr. Client, I have concierge service with, you, with uh, Everest, I have Transamerica LB in case this happens, I have an overfunded IUL, and I also have an alpha account. The other day, let me tell you a quick story. The other day, uh, where's Uber Ayala? Right there? Stand up right there, brother. This gentleman right here in my base shop in San Dimas, he brought a client over. He works at an attorney uh, uh, law legal service, and one of the clients there, he connected with him. He brought this family over, and this family had a son that was in Primerica. And the son in Primerica, obviously he's new, so he sold him a Primerica policy. And how much life insurance they had? 50000 So the dad had $50,000 of life insurance, the mom had $50,000 of life insurance, and $15,000 each on, on the, the two kids. And they're paying some, uh, you know, like 70, 80 bucks, whatever that was. And then they sat down and they started to question, well, why should we go with you? And, the, the, you know, the mom just got a little aggressive there. And I was talking to the, to the son, and the son, he's probably, you know, I'm SEVC and WFG. And he's like training associate in Primerica. He's you know, trying to question me. You know? <laughs> and you gotta be professional. And of course, I have to do things to entice him to do what we do, but I gotta be patient and smart enough to attract him into our business by facts. So I was just thinking there, I was like, God, I haven't been in this sort of space for a little bit. So I said, hang on a second. I, at my desk, I reached behind my drawer and I have all of my policies. I had a stack of policies like this. And I grab my policy and says, let me show you what I have here. And then I called Sandra and said, Sandra, can you come over here? Because she has my password, uh, the, the access uh, to my, all my information. So I said, Sandra, come over there and says, get in here and show, show them all my policies. Turn the computer over to the client right there. I said, look, I got this policy right here. I got it this date. I got this other policy right here. And then I specifically showed them each and every one of the policies I have. I have one policy that has like $278,000 in my cash value. Uh, one of the first policies I ever bought from Ed Milet when I first came on board. And I've been funding that policy and funding it. And here I am, you know, it's uh, 18 years later. I had, you know, nearly 300 grand saved in the cash value. And the people I bought just flipped out. They could not believe it. I said, see, that says cash value. So look how much money it says. Premiums paid from a, what is it, from a inception today? Is that, is that what it's called? Uh, from a, what is it? Total, total premium paid. In other words, from the time I made my first payment to right now, this is how much money I paid. So I put in, you know, X amount of dollars, and then how much that I had in my cash value. The difference was massive. This is how much I put in, but the cash value was way up here. So I said, see, calm down, because I you all don't lose money. And the family just flipped out, and the guy there was like, he was speechless. He didn't, and they just, you know, of course, they got ego. So I said, and I told the, I told, uh, the husband's all fired up, the wife too, but the son is there because, you know, he's been brainwashed at Primerica. <laughs> yes, yes. By the way, I was brainwashed at Primerica when I was there until I was re-brainwashed. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So the husband and wife asked me, so, so what's next? What do we do next? I said, well, here's the reality. None of this can happen. You can't own any of our products until your son terminates with Primerica and rolls with us. Wow. Mm. They were thinking, I was immediately going to pull out an application, let's do that, and I says, well, what am I going to do here? Am I going to have you guys, husband and wife, with me, and then your son's in Primerica, and then what about the next referral? What about the next client? You're going to send it over here, or you're going to send it to your son? So I don't want there to be any conflict in the family. I want all of you guys to be sold out to what we do, and I think I've proven it to you. Your leader in Primerica ain't committed like this guy. He don't have the track record. He ain't sold out like me. He don't have more money than I do. He ain't making more money than I do. He don't believe in his product more than I believe in mine. 
I don't know how long he's been doing that, but I've been doing it here, and I make millions of dollars, and I have a lot to show for it, and I'm far more committed to this than he is over there. And I looked at the young man, he's the what, 18, 19 years old, says, wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree with me? And he's just, he's like, his ego wouldn't let him. Hmm. See, ego can be one of the biggest destroyers of your future. You got, you got too much of an ego that can hold you from your full potential in your life. And I says, listen, you guys go home, pray about it, hum about it, do whatever you need to do. <laughs> and then you know where I'm at. Next Saturday I have a meeting, next Tuesday I have a meeting, you can come right back. If this is gonna go somewhere, you know where your future's at. And if it's not, God bless you. Your Primerica future is highly in question. By the way, Mr. Husband, remember, you only have $50,000 of insurance. If something happens to you, your wife's only getting a check for 50,000, in less than a year, that money's gone. Then what? By the way, they're not even investing the difference. You know, buy, term, and invest the difference? That's bullshit. You can't buy, term, and invest the difference with no 80 bucks. The so term will run out for most people, and they got nothing. So they'll pay insurance for 20, 30 years, end up with no life insurance and no money, and that was their plan. So they talk about, we do what's right, we help the American family. That's bullshit. No, you don't. You have them pay premiums for 20 years, they outlive the 20 years or 30 years, and they don't have a dime saved. So I want you to know, if you have IUL and you really look at that, it's sort of like a forced savings, because people don't save. IUL is a forced savings, it's an awesome product. All of you who don't have one, will never be big. You don't own IUL, you're not overfunding it, you're not serious about that, it's not gonna work for you. You can't ask for someone to to buy something that you don't own yourself. You know how many times I pulled out my own policy, my own statements in front of a client with a KTP I said, look, boom, I'm putting a thousand dollars a month in this policy and I had it for eight, nine years. Look what it's doing, look how it works. And they see my name on the statement, they see the dates, they see the amounts, they see the numbers. Mr. Client, based on what you see, based on what you've heard, do you see any reason why we should move forward today? The right people quickly come on board, the wrong ones continue with their method of procrastination, which inevitably leads them to financial disaster. Go with me? Yes. Hey, i got enough common sense, and I believe in this stuff, and I'm an overall pretty smart guy, but the main thing is I'm a decisive decision maker. I don't procrastinate. If you don't know how to make quick decisions and stick by them, you'll always compromise your ability to get ahead. Y'all with me? Yes. Successful people make solid business decisions rel relatively quickly and stick to them, while people who aren't successful take a long time to make a decision, they procrastinate, finally make a decision, and then they're quick to change their decision long after they make it, or short, shortly after they make it. Characteristics of successful winners in life are people know how to make good decisions and stick to them. Y'all with me? Yes. All right, let's switch the page one more time. My third topic I want to go over with you guys. I want to talk to you about using technology to make sure you grow your business. So for many of us right here, we're behind the eight ball, we're, we're, long, behold, we're long behind the technology curve, and I want you to know that my wife and I are committed to making sure that we increase our ability to grow our business using technology. So not too long ago, it's just, we, I've, I've made many mistakes, like you are, but I want to hopefully help you with minimizing the mistakes and some of the things that you're doing right now that don't necessarily serve your business. So, technology tools that you ought to have. All of you in here should have Google Calendar. Every single one of you guys, if you don't have a Google Calendar, you need to get on the Google Calendar. You need to have your assistants, whoever's around you, monitor the activity on your, your Google Calendar. And one of the things that I've done lately, if you get pretty smart, we've all been there, there's a VPN, and then you're interviewing a guest, and your guest is pretty sharp, but somehow, for whatever the reason, the guest decides that right then and there, he's not gonna sign up, uh, they're gonna delay a little bit, but you see that they have potential. Have you ever been in front of a new prospect, and like, man, this guy could be awesome here. You ever, you ever had it? Yes. Yeah, okay, and then we let him go, and then we don't see him again, and then down the road, some other WFG person talks to them, and then they scoop him up because you didn't get him. You with me? Yes. We're, all, we're all guilty of that. That's happened to me. So I was like, hey, we got to cut this out. But that's carnage. That's just, that's terrible. We prospected them. We introduced them. They came to our meeting. We did a hiring interview. They quite weren't ready to go. Maybe it's just, you know, they're little procrastinators themselves. But we don't have a solid follow-up system here. So you've heard it before. 
The fortune is in the follow-up. Y'all with me? Yes. The fortune is in the follow-up. So I want you to create a system by which your technology reminds you to follow up with that guy. It's been said that the average sale, whether it's car sales, if it's real estate, if it's mortgage, if it's vitamins, if it's juices, if it's girdles, whatever the hell people are selling out there, if it's solar, the average sale is made on the sixth to seventh attempt. So some of your key people, some of you in here, you didn't actually get started with us until someone followed up with you five, six, seven different times. So my question to you right now is, do you have a system in place that keeps the reminders constant, so therefore you follow up and you follow up and you follow up and you follow up on that guy you're trying to recruit. People that you know have the potential. Let me see my phone right there, Sandra. Let me, uh, I want you guys to hear this right, right there. Let me, I, while we're in this meeting right here, I'm just, I'm preparing my talk and I'm like, man, I need to follow up with this guy. This is a guy that I just know can kick some butt and I've met him not too long ago and let me uh, read to you my text that I just sent him. You know, people don't pick up their phones or a lot of them don't, but I just sent him a text that says, uh, hey, what's up, Nick? I haven't forgotten about you. I hope you're doing well, and life is right where you right where you want it. I'm sure a guy like you isn't settling for a life less than what you, what you deserve and are capable of. It's my text on. It says, uh, "I told you before that you could be a, you could be great in our business, and obviously we're getting older, so maybe the time is right for you to finally commit to be, to begin building your financial empire. I'll help you, I'll guide you, and I'll teach you how to do it." Holler back at me, brother. G. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to be the sixth six time, seventh time, eighth time that I text him, but I know it's getting closer and closer and closer. Before you know it, I'm going to call that guy. He's going to be on Momentum Monday, and that'll be another person that I'm going to add to my repertoire of frontline SMDs that's going to create more and more wealth for my family, not to mention how much wealth I'm going to create for that guy. So do you have a system? Do you have a reminder system to constantly be in the ear of the person that can build your business? So I'm gonna recommend you guys all do this. So the average sale to a client, a business owner, or anyone who needs to hear about our opportunity and or our products takes roughly seven times. But you need to have a system. So if you don't have a follow-up system of warm people, you only, uh, people you, to follow up with people, you have someone else recruit them and make them a client. So you warm them up, but you didn't follow up and someone else took them from you and you did all the work, but you didn't get them. So remember again, the fortune is in the follow up. So if you have Google Calendar and you set it apart, so it says, for example, if I'm recruiting Eric, he says, hey, it sounds kind of good, it sounds kind of good, but timing is a little bit off, so it's not a problem, Eric, I understand. Um, I'm gonna stay in contact with you in the next week to 10 days. I'm gonna shoot you a reminder phone call so we can get together again. We're, are we good with that? Yes. So then I put his name and I don't have my calendar. I have my staff work with me on that. And then every seven to 10 days, I'm dripping, dripping, dripping on this guy. I don't know if it's gonna be a month or two or three, but sooner or later, I'm gonna give me a key stud. Because we all have those people that we feel they got the goodies, they have the hunger, they speak well, they belong with us, and somehow they're not with us because you've not been aggressive enough with your follow-up system. Y'all y'all with me here? Yes. So use technology. I don't know what it's gonna be. I, I, Many of you guys have a, the Google Calendar. I recommend you use that one and link it to your assistant. Also, you use your uh, your assistant to remind you, and then also your planner pad. I have Google Calendar and a planner pad, so now be connected to that. Every day you should be inputting information in your Google Calendar. You should also be on your planner pad, reminding you of the people that you need to follow up with, making your list of people that you have. You should have a top 10 follow-up list, put that in your notes right now. Every single one of you guys should have a top 10 follow-up list. Who are the people you've talked to before that are not coded with us, and somehow you don't have a follow-up system? So the follow-up is one of the key components to being successful here. Do you understand most people that are big, you're not gonna get them day one. It takes some follow-up. It takes, it takes direct intention 